Hello, and welcome to the Knowing My Milton Keynes website. Thank you for taking the time to look around, and especially for listening in. I hope at the end of your visit, you will know Milton Keynes and its stories a little better. In this recording, we shall hear a folk tale connected to the landscape that Milton Keynes now inhabits, and consider what an old story can tell us about a new town, and how we feel about it. These stories help us create a sense of place that connects us to others who live in that area, to the cultural heritage, and also to helping us build our own self-identity to the place that we call home. So first, the story. This is a tale of Dick Turpin, the notorious highwayman who would ride on his famous horse, Black Bess, up and down the highways of England, crying, Stand and deliver your money or your life! Holding up travellers, whether on horseback or in stagecoach, and plundering their pockets for great riches and rewards. Dick Turpin, in this story, has just rode into Woofton on the Green, a small village that now sits in Milton Keynes. And if you go there to this very day, you'll come across a pub called the Old Swan. And in Dick Turpin's day, it stood there too. For Dick Turpin knew the landlord. Highwaymen and landlords like to get on well with each other, for the landlords always know which way the wealthy travellers are going, and the highwaymen always give an extra bonus once they've plundered pockets. In this story, when Dick arrives at the Old Swan, he takes the rooms right in the top of the pub. In those rooms, he could see across the landscape, and cutting across that landscape was the old Roman road, the Wattling Street, that stretches from London right up to Hollyhead. Just a little bit further on up the Wattling Street was another small hamlet called Loughton, and there there was a crossroads, and that crossroads was Dick Turpin's favourite place to go and commit his crimes. And it so happened that he'd heard that a wealthy traveller would be coming down that road any day, so he was watching for the first signs as he hatched his plans of attack. But Dick was smart, Dick was cunning, he knew that he didn't just need to plan his attack, he also needed to plan his escape. And to this end, he went to go and see the local blacksmith at Woofton on the Green. When he arrived, with his horse Black Bess in tow, he asked the blacksmith to take off her horseshoes and to turn them round the other way. Well, the blacksmith was quite bemused by this. He said, Dick, those old shoes won't last half as long if you ride her like that. They're not going to do good till man or beast. And once the deed was done, he leapt on the back of Black Bess and off he rode to that crossroads at Loughton. And he hid and he waited until the rich merchant came in sight and there he leapt out pistols ablazing crying his famous call of stand and deliver and once that traveller was well robbed well Dick he often made his escape but the trouble was when the authorities turned up they were quite perplexed you see the witness said that Dick had rode off in one direction, but the horseshoe print, well, they seemed to tell another tale. And so the authority spent time searching around, trying to fathom which way Dick had gone. This gave him enough time to head north up the Watling Street until he came to the small coaching town of Stony Stratford. And there he had yet more friends that were landlords. Now some might tell you that he was good friends with the landlord of the White Horse and others will tell you that it was the Old Talbot. But whichever pub in Stoney it was, it was definitely on the west side of the High Street. For all the buildings on the west side of the High Street, none of them had cellars because the River Ouse on that side of the town would flood quite regularly. And so instead of taking beers down into the cellar, they would winch the barrels up into the roofs. Well, when Dick came riding in, flustered, hot and fast, he cried to his friend the landlord, Quick, you must save me, the authorities will be on my tail in no time at all. But the landlord looked at Dick and said, 
My friend, you know I would always love to help you, but I can hide you. But I have nowhere to hide your horse, Black Bess, who's nearly as famous as you. If those authorities come through here and see her in my stables, they're going to know you're close by and we'll both be for it. No, Dick, be off on your way and save both our necks. But it was then that Dick had an idea. He looked at that winch outside and a few moments later he was strapping up Black Bess and winching her up into the roof where he and his horse hid for three days while the authorities searched the area. When they could find no hide nor hair of man nor beast, well, they carried on their way. And once Black Bess was winched back down, Dick Turpin and Black Bess rode out of this story and in to many others. At first, this may seem like a strange story to pick, to improve sense of place. It's about a notorious criminal who in real life was a murdering brute of a man. But let's explore the story more closely. The story itself isn't just about Dick Turpin and his adventures. It talks about the area, highlighting certain points, such as the crossroads at Loughton, which could be seen from the top room of the old swan in Woofton on the Green, or that the west side of Stony Stratford used to get flooded regularly by the River Ouse before the Milton Keynes Development Corporation built flood prevention into the new town plans. So captured in this story is a snapshot from the past of Milton Keynes and a very real sense of intangible heritage that lies in its landscape. Secondly, the character of Dick Turpin is a general character. Like Robin Hood, Turpin is a romantic rogue figure which many have a soft spot for and who is connected to many areas across England. By having such a story, Milton Keynes can be seen to reconnect with the national narrative, dispelling the notion of otherness created by its newness and demonstrate a heritage accessible to those outside of or new to the area. Lastly, it is a hero tale. The protagonist is under threat, but through cunning averts danger to ride safely to live another day. By a hero tale being told connected to these places, it also affects the area, raising it from the ordinary to the extraordinary, where adventures can happen and people can achieve wondrous things. In these three ways, we can see that stories like these are more than mere entertainment, but subtly inform our sense of place as the tales tell us about the heritage that that place has, whilst connecting us culturally to the wider society and instil in us a sense of possibility. These elements are not unique to this tale or even to Milton Keynes. Everywhere has a story because we humans fill our lives with stories. Wherever we live or have lived, there are stories, some older than others, some easier to find than others, but they are there each waiting to share something about the place that we live. These stories give us the chance to reconsider what we think we know and restory the narrative that surrounds the place we call home with each passing generation. So what stories do you know about your area? And what are those stories trying to tell you? If you don't know any stories, try asking people in your community or looking in the local history section of your library and discover the hidden gems that lie in wait and restory the place that you live from the mundane to the magical.